Minister's Island is a small 490-acre tidal island just off the coast of St. Andrews by the Sea in the traditional territory of the Passamaquoddy people in the Canadian province now known as New Brunswick. In this, our second video about the National and Provincial Historic Site, I'm letting someone else do the talking. I met up with Laura Oland, Minister Island's museum intern, and Susan Gertson, the museum's tour manager with over 20 years experience, to get a tour of the island. Come along with us as we wander through the island's buildings and talk about its history. And if you haven't already, be sure to watch my video essay explaining the reasons this museum developed into the historic site it is today. We started our visit bright and early at the crack of 7.30 a.m. The museum has a tied schedule of visitors to consult before planning their day at Minister's Island because, and one of the most unique parts of the experience offered at Minister's Island, guests actually drive to the island. Bar Road, a short stretch of sandbar connecting the island to the community of St. Andrews, is drivable at low tide, but is inaccessible when the tide comes in. Once across, visitors will find themselves at a ticket booth. From there, we wander our way out to Covenhoven, where guests are encouraged to begin their visit. A quick clarification before we dive in. Dogs are permitted on Minister's Island, but they're not allowed in the historic buildings. You'll notice that Frankie was able to join us as we explored the Barnum Bathhouse. It's always important to ask before bringing your pet into a museum, as most have strict pet policies, service animals not included. While we were given the okay to bring Frankie into some buildings, she had to sit out of our tour through Covenhoven. Okay, so welcome to Covenhoven. 50 room house, 17 bedrooms, 11 bathrooms, and 11 fireplaces. And it was a summer home of Sir William Van Horn, who was the builder of the railway. So William Van Horn uh, first visited the island in 1890. Um, uh, so when he came to St. Andrews in 1890 to see the railway that had extended into St. Andrews, and he was really captivated with the area. Uh, from there, he took Minister's Island. He purchased a parcel of land. Uh, the island previously, or the entire island at the time, was owned to, or it was owned by the Andrews family. So the Andrews uh, sold off one parcel, which was the tip for the houses here. And yeah, he started building in 1891. It was initially supposed to be a modest summer home, but as we're standing out in the front veranda, uh, this was inspired to look like a train station. So the idea is when guests would arrive, uh, there was a trail to the right uh, called Cedar Lane. Yeah. And so ideally his guests would come up Cedar Lane and they'd be dropped off at the end here and then walk in to the veranda. William Van Horn was born in Illinois in 1843 died in 1915 at the age of 72. When he was 14, he quit school and he went to work for the Illinois Railway. Within three months, he became the telegraph officer. Then in 1881, he came to Canada as the general manager of the Canadian Pacific Railway. So between 1881 and 1885, he managed to lay over 2,900 miles of track through land that no man thought possible, which was mainly the Rockies and the Great Lakes. And he did it in a shorter time as anyone would think. If you look at the painting, that's the driving of the last bike done in Craigalachie, BC. Donald Smith is driving the spike in the ground. And this is William Van Horn right there. And the gentleman between the two is Sir Sanford Fleming. And Sir Sanford Fleming's, one of his claim to fame is standardized time or time zones. Now William Van Horn was married to a Lucy Hurd. They had two children. They had a son, Benny. Benny had no interest in this place. He died at the age of 54. Benny had a son, Billy. Again, no interest. He died at the age of 39. Billy had a daughter, Beverly Ann. I'll tell you more about her in a minute. But William Van Horn also had a daughter, Adeline. Now Adeline was just like her father. So she loved this place. After he passed away, he left it to Adeline. And Miss Adeline, or Adeline continued on as Sir William had done throughout her lifetime. And then in 1941, when she passed away, she left it to Beverly Ann. 
Beverly Ann was only nine years old, so couldn't really look after an island. So the Royal Trust Company from Montreal, they stepped in and looked after it for the family. Then in 1961, Beverly Ann was an adult, decided she didn't want it. So at that point, it was sold out of the family. The uh, couple of owners later, in 1977, the gentleman that had it then, he decided he wanted to sell. Was having trouble selling, so in 1977, he held an auction here in this living room and sold off most of the original artifacts. Three days into the auction, the province of New Brunswick stepped in and put a stop to it. And if you notice, as you go through, the whole house is furnished. Most of the furnishings are not William Van Horns. They are donations that have been given to us in the last five or six years. And it is now owned by the province of New Brunswick, and it has been declared a national and a provincial historic site. So it was closed down then until 93, and then in 1993, they opened it for tours. Tours continued, run by the province up until 2004. Then a new group took over. They're known as Van Horn Estates on Ministers Island Incorporated, a non-profit group. They can fundraise, they can uh, accept donations. Province couldn't. So they have been running it since then. So this is the living room of the home. So the two pillars on either side of the fireplace, they are gold leaf mahogany from Italy. They, uh, they are original to the home. At one point, there must have been something underneath them so that they would reach the ceiling. We hope they're not support pillars, but I don't think they are. <laughs> they were both painted white when they took over before they opened for tours. They took the fire one and stripped it back to the gold leaf. The one on this side stayed white up until about 15 years ago. There was a movie made here called Red Rover, starring Billy Baldwin, Jodie Lynn O'Keefe. Mm -hmm. And they painted this one to look like gold leaf. Now the paintings you see in the living room, the one above the fireplace and the one over against the wall there, they were done by William Van Horn. He actually only slept four hours a night. The rest of the time he was working, painting, doing things like that. There's four rooms on each side of the room here. The two rooms on this side were both libraries, they were both original. The room at the bottom is our gift shop. The room here is our Passamaquoddy First Nations. Now they were the early settlers on the island. So in here we do have a display showing how they lived and worked while they were here on the island. They were the first settlers here. If you notice on the signs in here, the signs on the wall, they are French, English and Passamaquoddy. So they were here in the summers and back on the mainland in the winters. They would hunt and fish from here. The uh, Passamaquoddy people have moved to the States. They're just over by Eastport, Maine. They have a reservation over there now. This room over here, when we head over, is William Van Horn's bedroom. Okay. So he slept close to the front door. He wouldn't waken the rest of the family if he decided to get up in the middle of the night and, and paint. Paintings in this room are all original to William Van Horn. Mm -hmm. Now, if you notice the painting that you just passed, this one right here, if you notice the signature on it. Read it backwards. Oh, then. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> I would not have noticed that at all. <laughs> Sammy signed, Sammy didn't. So are you aware of... Um, like how much of the furniture is original? Yes, for the most part I do. Yeah. That dresser's original. And the, the wicker couch is original. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like an unusual place to put that room. You know, yes, like yeah. yeah. And it's one of the smaller rooms in the house. Yeah. So we're going to head this way through into the dining room. The bookcase in here is also original. The books have been donated from the archives. They're not original Van Horn books, but they, they are old and they, they fit. So in the dining room, table chairs are original to the home, but the dishes are not. Okay. 
the dishes are do a donation. The, uh, in fact, most of the furniture in here is original, except for the two large chairs over there and the wood box behind me. Now, the table seats 24 people. Now, the leaves for it are right over here, behind there. They're in an upright stand, which is really unusual. Object in the corner over there is a linen press. Two years ago, the... Uh, was it the Natural Living Museum in Ottawa? Is that right? Was get, we're getting rid of a bunch of William Van Horn's model ships. So he's a painter and he made model ships as well? He hired someone to build them for him. Okay, so he more collected them. Yeah, yeah. So we have six of them and we have four of them here right now and two of them are being cleaned and spruced up. Mm -hmm. But these ships are uh, a new display. The cases are new this winter. Butler's Pantry. You notice the three little holes, three little holes so the servants could see when the next course was due. The items in this room are not original, although there are some original items in that showcase, including the maid's towels. And we're into the kitchen. So the stove is the original coal burning stove, very large, very heavy stove. They do say it took six men, six men to lift it, but we moved it last week and only took three women, so. <laughs> Items on the table for the most part are not original, just they are donations. So we're, all, we're into the servants' quarters right now. Ice box is original to the home, ice in the middle, food on either side. And the ice came from Shamcook Lake, which is just outside of town. Mm -hmm. So there they would bring the ice to the island in the winter, store it in one of two ice houses. One was just outside the door here and the other larger one down by the barn. Mm -hmm. This wall was not here originally. So this would have been a long room for the servants to have their meals and things like that. Here we have our laundry room now. We were given donations of a whole bunch of laundry equipment, so we've turned it into a laundry room. Mm -hmm. Two rooms at the bottom, head cook and head butler's bedroom. So they did stay downstairs close to their work. And I'm sure we know which one got the bigger room. So up through the servants, staircase up to the bedrooms. So these are all servants' bedrooms. Again, for the most part, the furnishings are not original. That's the door that's here. That's the one that everyone asks about. I bet. Is it just a closet? It is just a closet. Wow. And above the doors, you notice transom windows that would let the light, the breeze through. Yeah, you don't light that one up because it's broken toilet. I was going to say, yeah. Somebody sat in that bed. It's not a good thing to do. Because yeah. most of the beds are only slats of wood with a full mattress on top. Mm -hmm. So do you know how big the staff would have been when the house was... They, they were always said 33 full-time servants, but that include far, included the farm workers, the, the carriage drivers. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the summer here, they would have brought in part-time help from town, locals. This is the end of the servants' quarters? That's the end of the servants' quarters, yeah. Here was guest rooms. This one we've turned into our CP room, our Canadian Pacific room. There's a flag here that William Van Horn flew when he was in residence, kind of like the Queen. And that's in his home? Now this room was a bedroom, but uh, William Van Horn did so much in his lifetime, more than building the railway across Canada, that if we stood here and told people everything, they'd wander away. They, they, there's just too much to remember. Mm -hmm. So there is this room with the signs and the banners that uh, explain more about him so people can do this room at their pay, own pace and read about mm -hmm. his life. 
And over here we have a fossil table. He collected fossils. And most of his collection was donated to the University of Chicago after his death, but here we do have this table and you can see the fossils quite clearly in it. So as Montreal, he, was, he traveled Europe, places like that a lot. And his Montreal home held the treasures from that. This, I think, was more the cottage. Mm -hmm. I did say there was 11 bathrooms. This is one of them. If you notice, it's in the inner side of the house, so there's no window. So we put in skylights. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the nicest skylights I ever, have ever seen. The, uh, the, the roof was put over top back in the 60s or 70s to protect them, I'm sure. Of course. Now here is the, the ship. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> This is the, the big one. Mm -hmm. So did he have a connection to the ships that he was getting models of, or did he just? I don't believe so. Okay. I think they were just uh, something that he, he was interested them. in, yeah. I wonder if they came when it has all the guns out like this. 64 gun. Yeah. You also notice the skylight in the hallway here. Again, another original. This one was leaded glass. And this would have been the main staircase, really quite a plain staircase. It's not ornate in any way. So this would be Lady Van Horn's bedroom. So she was upstairs on this side of the house and he was downstairs on the other side. You see right here, there's a picture. Oh, yeah. And that's how the bedroom was at that time. Metal beds, all twin beds throughout the whole house. Mm -hmm. There was, as far as the auctioneer who, who ran the auction had told me there was no double beds, it was all twin beds. The bathroom in this room has been updated. And the carpet in this room and the carpet in the living room are actually from the Algonquin Hotel. Okay. When they closed down, they sold off everything they had. Mm -hmm. And there was a couple in town bought those two carpets, couldn't use them, probably the rooms weren't big enough. So they gave them to us, mm -hmm. and they fit in here rather nicely. Yeah, yeah it definitely does. Um, so this is the closet? This is Lady Van Horn's closet. Uh, you'll notice the glass up there. Yeah. Uh, the cabinets were to hold her hats. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And there is a little window at the top there on this side, which brought the light in from the, ba <coughs> excuse me, in from the bathroom through into the closet. The light in this room and the next room are the original gas lights. So it was a gas lighting throughout the home, carbide pellets and water. They were made in a little building out back. Acetylene gas, and it was piped. It was piped into the house for the uh, lighting. Here we have a walk-through bathroom. So no, they didn't have their own bathroom, but they shared, which was still a lot better than going outside. Mm -hmm. Again, another guest bedroom. This, as I say, this room and the last room, they're the only two that face the front of the house, and there is a view. Now, the green couch and two chairs are original to Van Horn. They were actually on his railway car. He had his own railway car called the Saskatchewan. And they were on it. I don't think the wheels were on it at that time. It probably wouldn't work well. Yeah. This is the daughter's bedroom. Although when her mother passed away, she moved up into the mother's bedroom. The three prints on the wall, one were done, one, the first one was done by William Van Horn, the second by his sister, and the third by his daughter. So it was re they were really a talented family. So this chaise lounge is another original piece. Another original bathroom. So this is Benny's bedroom. Benny was the son. And actually it's probably the brightest room in the house. The fireplace in this room is Italian marble. The beds in this room the bed frames in this room are original. 
The floor you see is quite interesting. Uh, during Van Horn times, all the floors were, or every, all the wood was a natural wood. Okay. But in the 70s, everything got painted, got painted some pretty awful colors. Uh, but they painted around carpets. If there was a rug on the floor, they didn't paint it. They, just, they didn't move it, they just painted around it. So this is Billy's bedroom. So it was Billy which child? Billy was the grandson. The grandson, okay. Benny's son. Mm -hmm. The wallpaper in here, and it's the back wallpaper, mm -hmm. uh, border, I shouldn't say wallpaper, border, that was painted by Sir William Van Horn for Billy on his third birthday. Mm -hmm. And it's signed across the bottom. Now about six years ago, there was a lady visited from Victoria, BC, saw how bad the shape was of the original, so she went back to Victoria and made up this front panel for us and sent it to us. So we will... For the original is this one? That's right, okay. yeah. So we will know what, what it should look like. Yeah. Well. The items in the showcases here are original to the home. And the fireplace is Delft tile from Holland. This room tended to show the Dutch heritage more than the other rooms, with the windmill out back and the Delft tile. The prints on the wall were done by Sir William Van Horn. I like the uh, carving on the chest. Yes, uh, three blind mice. That's an original chest, actually. So this staircase takes you up to the third floor. It was a last addition to the home. It was added in 1911. Simply an office for the financial secretary and a playroom for the grandson. Okay. Two of them shared it. There is a washroom up there, and here you can see the window for the washroom. There's three entrances to the attic. Due to safety, fire safety, we can't take people up there because it's the only staircase. Mm -hmm. It's the third and last staircase. So that was to bring the light into the house. Yeah. It works great if you've got a window behind it. It's not so good if you don't. Mm -hmm. Boy, that so in here, obviously, uh, the games room. Table's original to the home. It's a Burles and Watts. It was made in London, England. And William Van Horn had two of these tables, one here and one in his Montreal home. It's six feet by 12 feet, two inches of slate, and it weighs over 3,000 pounds. The scoreboard is also original. It is one of a kind. And we actually had an, sent an email to them, oh, 10, 12 years ago, and they replied that this is the only one like this ever made. The pool cues on the far side are original to the home, mm -hmm. are original to the table. The couch at the bottom, is original. Now, the movie that was made, Red Rover, back in 2004, they, uh, we had no furniture in the house at that time, and they brought in furniture. They found that couch and bought it. It was an original Van Horn couch. Mm -hmm. so, so they left it for us after they'd finished. So this last room was William Van Horn's officer studio, and then this became the room that Benny was brought to when he got sick. Benny did pass away in this home. And uh, Benny and his son Billy are both buried in St. Andrews at our town cemetery. The rest of the family are buried back in Illinois. Okay. Uh, there's a large family plot there with his parents, his sister, the whole family, except for the son and grandson. So in this room, the furniture is original except for the showcase, obviously. The cabinet that you see against the wall, that dates back to 1642. And William Van Horn simply used that to store his painting supplies. All the paintings are his. The light in this room, again, is an original except for the conversion to electricity. And the paint color is not original, but it is a period color. The house finished here. So this was a room. Yeah. This was one of the additions added. Yeah. You can see the outside wall that goes straight across here. And you see the glassed-in area there. That would uh, have been the room behind was known as the cutting room. So that was for the flowers. 
Mm. Uh, it's now washrooms and the staff room, which was updated to a 70s kitchen. We don't show that to too many people. Yeah. The bar that we see here was added in the 70s, 60s, sorry, it was a hunting lodge at that time, okay. and they needed a bar. But really, this is the only major change, structural change to the house, which is not bad, mm -hmm. considering that in the bathroom in Lady Van Horn's room. Yeah. And that's us through the house. Okay, so this building was for the water. There's a small kerosene engine inside. It would start up the larger kerosene engine. That would go 127 feet down below to the well, take the water from the well over to the 10,000 gallon holding tank that's buried underground. And from there it was piped into the house for the running water. Also to the fire hydrants, there's three of them around here. They are original. Now the the holding tank was a railway car, uh, which he borrowed from the CP, but uh, that was what he used to hold the, store the water. The other building was the gas building I mentioned before. There they took carbide pellets and water, combined them to make a carbide gas or acetylene gas, and again piped underground into the house and some of the other buildings for the lighting. And the building that's down below there is the carriage house. That was for the carriages and the horses for that. The, uh, above there is an apartment for the worker, one of the workers, and on top is an original weather vane. Okay, yeah. And the other stone building is the garage. We still use that for our equipment. But there they would have kept the cars, Rolls Royce type of thing. The son, Benny, brought the cars onto the island. William Van Horn didn't. I believe in the cars. <laughs> so yeah, welcome to the bathhouse. Do you want to move this? Oh, great. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's so interesting. So yeah, the bathhouse, the construction began in 1911 and was completed in 1912. Uh, originally, there weren't actually windows, uh, so the breeze would have flown quite nicely through. So there's no yeah, there's no glass originally, and uh, so yeah, beautiful view of the waters. Of course, Bay of Funday. Of course, now we have some of the, the highest tides in the world, so lots of uh, marine life as well, which is really neat. So yeah, with the tides, uh, so it takes about six hours, 13 minutes, like roughly, for the tide to go up and the time to go tide to go down. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, typically there's four tides a day, like a highest tide, a high tide, a lowest tide, and a, a low tide, typically. Um, so you can actually see a picture here. So down below, so we can't see it when we're in the tide tide, there was actually a pool that they dug out, so it would be about eight feet deep. And so when we're at, during, or during high tide, the pool would fill up, so when they went out for low tide, you'd have a full salt water, fresh pool. So yeah, Van Horn would often come down here to paint, which would be quite inspirational and just the beautiful views. Because yeah, you can see St. Andrews right from there. You can see yeah. the tip of the Algonquin, the coast, past Maquadu Bay. So the structure itself was built from the red sandstone that you can see down uh, on the water, and some of the, of the stone was also used for the house as well, which is really neat. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is when you stand underneath, the way your, your voice is really projected. I don't know, if you stand under and like speak. Oh, wow. <laughs> is, that, is that an echo? Like, is it just the roof, or is it the light? The, roof. the, the shape of the building. building yeah. yeah. This is so yeah. neat. Yeah. So, yeah, I didn't know that until yeah, Susan showed me that last week. So, yeah, over in that direction uh, is actually the state. Uh, so, the state of Maine, and that's where the Passamaquoddy um, settlement that was here is currently located. Or their main areas over there. Area. Yes, yeah, so there's Hospital Island over here. Um, so that was a quarantine island for individuals who were coming over. Uh, so, because um, yeah, the, I think uh, you probably know more than me as I'm saying this. Because um, yeah, so many people who were coming over from Europe, typically in between like 1830s, 1850s, uh, to the area, you had to stay there for a period of time until you're deemed healthy and safe, but you were allowed to proceed onto the mainland. Let's head downstairs. <laughs> so, yeah. so 
good. The stairs are steep, so just watch your step. Okay. Don't close one. <laughs> <laughs> Coming down. So these be the changing Yeah, stalls? exactly. It's a changing stalls. Uh, so if you come down, put on your swimsuit before heading, heading out. Uh, of course, during this period, swimsuits were very different from swimsuits we wear today. A lot of them were made out of wool, and they'd have more like a shorts. Uh, component to them, so much heavier and not the flexible spandex that we have today for spoon material. Oh boy. Ooh, ooh. So I said, this is the first time I've done this at high tide. This is kind of fun. <laughs> I want you to walk out and see the pool. You know, find the pool. Find the what? The pool. <laughs> I'll go for a quick swim. <laughs> but yeah, it's really something. Well, we can come back before you guys go. Yeah, yeah come back. Actually, that'd be kind of neat to see it at both. Definitely. So, yeah, here we are at high tide. Yeah, they just all this portion here. But you can see really the red sandstone that they took from the area that they used to construct the bathhouse itself. See, how is the pool? Out to the left a bit. Like in this ish area, which when we come back at low tide, you will <laughs> see that we're not making it up. <laughs> Because it saves me coming down and opening the fort. Ah, that's very true. Yeah, Multitasking. Yep. <laughs> Whoa, that's not Holy too bad. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so the barn was built in 1898 and it cost $20,000 to build this barn. It's a three-story barn, top section was for the hay, down below were the smaller, less important animals. First thing you see when you walk in the barn will be the weigh scale. So everything that came in and out of the barn was weighed on this scale. He knew exactly what was going on in here at all times. <laughs> the workers in the barn wore white lab coats and every evening before they closed up the barn, they'd place a layer of sawdust on the ground. And that was how it was uh, presented to William Van Horn every morning. Mm. The roof and the siding on the barn, uh, the barn was updated. It was renovated. It was restored right. two years ago, okay. thanks to provincial federal government funding. The, this is how it did look back 120 years ago. The windows are quite high up. Originally, they were all down at eye level, but one day William Van Horn came riding over the barn hill and he saw people looking out the windows. Well, that meant they weren't doing their work. So the next day, up went the windows. Ah. <laughs> so basically, the wagons would have come in, they'd have been weighed, so they knew what, they, what their hay field yeah. yielded, and then it would go up, pull up here, and then taken up to the hayloft. Mm -hmm. So we can start walking through, but there's two silo or two round sections at the back. They were both silos and each one held about 250 tonne of feed. Mm -hmm. They fed everyone with their food here. The only thing basically that we've heard that he did not grow or raise was coal, carbide, kerosene, coffee, and cigars. Okay, so everything like else, cigars. <laughs> everything else was where he grew himself. Yeah. So over here, this, on this side were the cattle, some of the milking cattle in, in that side. This is the windows for the Clydesdale horses. 
Their heads would come out the top and they could feed them through this bottom one. Yeah. So we'll head through the, through the horse stall. Stay there. So here are the horse, the Clydesdale stalls. If you look at the two down here, the original, uh, it doesn't look quite so imposing. In the 70s, it was rented out to local farmers. So cattle came into the, the barn at this time, more cattle. These were converted into cattle stalls. So the flooring, the bar across it was all for the the smaller animals. Mm -hmm. The story goes that cows are not very smart, so once they you put their head under that bar, they weren't smart enough to take it oh, out. Nice. The uh, poop shoots. Poop shoots. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't want to be in the basement. <laughs> no. Let's go upstairs. Do you want to go first? Take the responsibility. <laughs> You're not going steps. <laughs> now, when they rena restored the building, they didn't know quite where to put a staircase. They didn't want to make it not look original. So they came up with the idea of putting the staircases in the silos. So we are now in one of the silos. So this was the hayloft. He would come in up there, and then there is a track that runs across the top, mm -hmm. and they would pull it to whatever, wherever they wanted to store the hay. If you look up at the ceiling, you can see it looks like the, uh, the underside of a hull of a ship. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it was shipbuilders, unemployed shipbuilders, that built the barn, so mm -hmm. it looks like that. Exactly. That was my next sentence. <laughs> City Market in St. John is built the same way. You can see the thickness of the beams in here. Mm -hmm. Well, it's Frankie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll head back down. If you're ready. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Frankie. Yeah. <laughs> so looking up at the silo, it looks much more impressive from this level. Come on through. This is the bottom of the silos, although it was not part of the the storage part. Okay. It's just the underside. Yeah. This was all yeah, the stonework here was all redone. Yeah. Technology from the, the material you had from the railway. Yeah, and that's probably why the barn has lasted so long. I mean, yeah. these beams are going nowhere. <laughs> so in here could have been the sheep. We do have sheep and pigs in here right now, but it doesn't mean to say they were there here 100 years ago. Mm -hmm. Ours are a bit better behaved. Well they are well behaved. Yeah. They clean up after themselves a whole bit. So we'll head to the other side of the lower level. Nice. Oh, that'd be very cute. Yeah, yeah. So in here were, was a milking area. Uh, this, uh, again, was all restored last two years ago. The windows at the end there, those three are not part of the original. It was a stone wall, but they had to put windows in to brighten it up for tours. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we uh, have a bunch of artifacts, not original art. People have donated those. Okay, yeah. When they brought in new items, they tried to use as much as possible of the original. Beams. Mm -hmm. Property as well. Yes. Yeah. I mean, uh, you have to, they, we, they really tried to keep it as much original as possible, and I think they did a good job. The track you see over here was for the, to take the waste out the door. Okay. That was a polite way of putting it.
I just love the stonework in here. So in here are prize-winning Dutch belted cattle. Yes, there is our Dutch belted say, cattle. We're looking good. <laughs> Dutch belted or uh, belted Galloway, they are a beef and a dairy cow. Okay. So you can eat them and drink them basically. Corners are rounded here. That was so that when they brought them in two at a time, they didn't hurt their hides on the way in. Mm -hmm. They were all prize winning. <laughs> Again, for the cattle. And we're back to the beginning. Creamery. The creamery is where they made butter, cheese, things like that. Mm -hmm. And the milk was piped underground from the barn down to the creamery. There they made butter, cheese, things like that. And all the produce was sent, meats, produce, flowers, everything were sent to his Montreal home in the winter. Oh, from the island. From the island. So it would be put on the train in the evening, mm -hmm. taken up to Montreal, and it was on his uh, table for breakfast the next morning. So the um, first individuals who lived on the island uh, was actually prior to uh, the Loyals that came through. Uh, however, with the, um, following the American uh, Revolution, uh, when this area became occupied by loyalists. Those who were, uh, remained loyal to the British Crown, they, after following the American Revolution, uh, they had to look a little bit north to the other Amer er, British colonies um, to go and live. So you see a lot of uh, loyalists <laughs> who uh, immigrated up to this area of uh, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia and such. So when they arrived, um, it was uh, the individuals who had lived here prior, their grant wasn't acknowledged by the British Crown. So it was taken over, it was originally purchased by a ship captain, uh, Samuel Osborne, and then that was sold to the Andrews family. So the Andrews family, uh, Reverend Andrews, so he built the home here. He was the minister in town for the, for the first, the first minister, first minister in town. <laughs> the first minister in town. So this is the home that they built here in 1790. So that was the original home. They did put an addition on after, so they occupied the entire island. Uh, so he would have to go across the exact same sandbar that you guys went across today, except of course it would be by horse at the time and not by vehicle, so he would go into town for uh, his services. And then this section here was added on later. So the island stayed in the Andrews hands uh, well into the 20th century. So when Van Horn first bought his first parcel of land in 1890, it was the area where we were uh, earlier, where the home is, but he slowly started purchasing more land. Uh, during Van Horn's time, he was not successful though in purchasing all of the land on the island. Uh, it was very important to the Andrews family that they still kept some of the island in their hands. But he sold off piece by piece. However, after he died, his daughter Adeline did purchase the final piece of land and the ownership of the entire island was in the hands of the Van Horns. Um, so anyways, it's a quite a standard uh, 18th century cottage, pretty simple, pretty plain. So it would definitely, uh, furniture would have been quite different than that of, that was in the, the Van Horn estate, so quite simple. Yeah. Uh, like it's not furnished. No, it's not furnished. <laughs> Hopefully in the, the near future, yeah, it's it's quite rough yeah. in there currently, so. <laughs> the yeah, exactly, so you yeah. hop in, especially the addition, that part is, yeah, pretty, pretty rough inside. But. And the Andrews family did continue to live in this home until the 1920s. Pardon? Your reflection. <laughs> Minister's Island is not a small historic site. We spent about six hours on the grounds and in some ways scratched the surface. The island has more to offer than we were able to cover in a single trip. The island's grounds, hikes, and greenhouses are well worth checking out, though we don't cover them here. Special thanks to Susan Gertson and Laura Olin for their time and for sharing their experience for today's video. Footage from this episode is courtesy of Graham Christie, and our theme music is by Pro For Free. You can learn more at prooforfree.bandcamp.com.